the IDF presented the outline for the evacuation of the Rafah population and the operational plans for the continuation of the fighting. We have difficult months of fighting ahead of us. I'm Yair Pinto, and this is your Boots on the Ground report about what is happening in Israel on this 145th day of the war against Hamas. I don't often try to make predictions, but it seems like there are some trends that we can see coming together regarding the continuation of the war with Hamas. For a start, after 145 days, the IDF has completed an action plan for Rafah, the last city in the Gaza Strip that is still under Hamas's control. The plan includes evacuation of the civilian population from Rafah, which will take at least 14 days, and Israel will not do this during the Ramadan fast that starts in two weeks. That means that it is likely to happen in the middle of April before the operation in Rafah begins, and the IDF estimates that it will take at least two months to complete. That means a potential operation in the northern arena of Israel against Hezbollah will be unlikely to start before July and possibly later. About 200,000 people live in Rafah on normal days and according to estimates it is now the home of more than half of the residents of the Gaza Strip. That means over a million and a half people. Within this amount of population hides the handful of Hamas terrorist operatives, men who are heavily armed and ready to attack from populated areas using the civilians as human shields. The IDF plans to evacuate civilians without injury and distinguish between civilians and Hamas militants. However, the fighting in Rafah had already started as reliable reports have surfaced of residential buildings, public institutions, and an Egyptian-funded housing project being attacked in East Rafah. While this is going on, we are also in the days of negotiations on the release of the Israeli hostages who were kidnapped during the Hamas massacre of October 7, 2023. There are many conflicting reports about what is going on with these negotiations, and honestly, I don't know what I can tell you about it. The IDF deals with fighting Hamas, and I have plenty I can tell you about these fights. But back to Rafah for a moment. The outline of events going forward will probably look something like this. The Rafah evacuation plan will be founded by the United States and the Arab Gulf states, and it will be carried out in practice by neighboring Egypt, which has a great interest in preventing the influx of Gazans into its territory in the Sinai Peninsula. According to the Israeli proposal, Egypt will build 15 tent cities of 25,000 housing units in the southwest of the Gaza Strip where it is assumed that the humanitarian aid will be directed after the operation in Rafah begins. According to Egyptian officials who spoke to the media, Egypt will be responsible for establishing the displaced persons camps and field hospitals in that location. But let's step back for a moment and take a wider look at what is happening in the Gaza Strip. When we look at the Gaza Strip from this wider perspective, it becomes apparent that the State of Israel has two challenges. First, in the north of the Gaza Strip, the lack of government reminds us of Somalia in the early 1990s. There is no one to manage and regulate the routine of life that is developing beyond the military context. The closest thing to a government is the appearance of more and more small armed militias made up of anyone who can get their hands on weapons and can find food and other supplies, which then they sell at a massively inflated price. This makes life increasingly difficult for everyone 
trying to live amidst the ruins. Israel does not want there to be a jungle of an underground space in northern Gaza, where the only law is that whoever uses violence can impose their will on everyone else. This problem needs serious attention or it will just get worse and Israel will certainly suffer negative effects from this bad situation on our southern border. Let's go back to Rafah. I also follow closely what is happening in Egypt to see what role they play. The news from Egypt is very worrisome. There are demonstrations in Cairo to demand that the government take a more robust approach to this situation regarding the city of Rafah itself. The Egyptians are very afraid of the possible spillover. Therefore, they are already deploying forces into the Sinai Peninsula in an apparent effort to prevent Palestinians from Gaza from crossing into Egyptian territory. The Rafah crossing, without any doubt, is and will continue to be the only central gate for the movement of people and materials in and out of the Gaza Strip. When I say this though, you need to remember that I am including in this equation the smuggling tunnels that have been dug underneath the Philadelphia Corridor, which is the name given to the borderline between Gaza and Egypt. Israel must regulate all activity there with the Egyptians on both a strategic and tactical level. In conclusion, Israel faces a very difficult task both on the political and military levels. With this in mind, I am asking you to please continue to help us spread the truth by sharing these videos and following us on social media and continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. As I mentioned before, a large-scale engagement with Hezbollah on the northern border is probably months away. However, an accident or miscalculation could lead to a rapid escalation there at any moment. This morning, about 35 launches were detected from Lebanese territory towards the Mount Miron area in the north of Israel. There were no casualties and no damage was caused to the air control unit in the area. In response, Israeli fighter jets attacked and destroyed a military site and a number of military infrastructures of the Hezbollah terrorist organization. This follows events earlier this week, which included the IDF's elimination of Hassan Hussein Salami, who was the overall commander of the Khajil sector in southern Lebanon and had participated in many attacks against Israel in recent months. He was a senior commander in Hezbollah's elite Rad one force of commandos, which is meant to carry out attacks in northern Israel, similar to what Hamas did on October 7th. Now, the IDF has eliminated this dangerous terrorist leader and the world is a safer place because of it. More recently, Israeli aircrafts have attacked Hezbollah's military positions in the area of Aita el Shaib in southern Lebanon, as well as rocket launching sites in the Kohava area, which was the source of rocket fire into Israel's Golan Heights over recent days. An IDF tank also attacked a Hezbollah position in Kfar Kila to break up an imminent attack on Israeli civilians that was about to be launched. I want to conclude by saluting Israeli heroes who fell defending the state of Israel over the past 24 hours. Major Iftach Shachar, 25 years of age, from Moshav Faran. He was a company commander in the Tzabar Battalion, Givati Brigade, a fighting officer in the Shaldag unit. He fell in the battles in the northern part of the Gaza Strip. Captain Itai Chef, 24 years of age, from Roham, a platoon commander in the Tzabar Battalion, Givati Brigade, fell in the battles in the northern part of the Gaza Strip. I ask you to pray for the soldiers of the IDF and continue to spread the truth. Share and follow us. And don't forget 
to pray for the families of those risking their lives every day in order to defend this country and to prevent this evil from reaching the United States and Europe. And most importantly, please join us in prayer for the peace of Jerusalem.